Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be installing one of these. It's a FM booster for your radio. So if you're having any troubles with the reception or anything, they're fairly cheap, quick and easy to install. So we'll jump into that. Okay, firstly, we'll just have a quick look. Um, now this is a, just a dashboard trim removing kit that I do actually have. You don't need one of these, but they are recommended if you're gonna be removing any dashboard parts. It does help to save any scratches or damage that you're gonna to do to those. Uh, voltage tester, I don't think I'm gonna need that one. Just some sort of a Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna need some sort of a electrical crimping tool and maybe some electrical tape. From here on out, we'll jump on into the dashboard and we'll start pulling that one apart. Okay, first things first, we just want to remove this silver trim. I'm just going to start trying to get into the bottom side of it. There's two clips here, a couple more clips here, and then four small clips at the top. So just use your little plastic tools, try and not do any damage to that one. Just to make it easier to access, I'm just gonna remove these two little clips here. Now they just have a little button at the bottom of each one of them. You just push that in and that just manages to pop that out. Next thing we're gonna do is there's a couple of screws. So there's one screw on either side of this one. There's another screw just a bit further in. And then just inside here, there's one more screw that you do need to access. And that'll remove this little panel here for you. The reason for doing all of this is I can't remove this top section until I've actually popped these buttons out. So let's jump in, we'll try and get those ones out. Okay, so this one you don't need to remove the entire way. All you've got to do now is if you reach underneath, if you're sort of on the left and the right hand side, if you go underneath and back up and under again, you can actually feel the bottom row of these buttons. Now they just push out from the bottom, so you just give them a little push and they'll just come right out there. So you just need to get those, just give them a bit of a jiggle. There we go. And that'll get you onto the next bit, which is gonna be removing this actual whole frame. Now this, as well as the shiny bit and the air vent, it's all one piece. So we're just gonna pop that out just to get us access to behind there. Right, next bit to access, you have four small screws here, they need to come out. Okay, because I needed to turn the ignition on just to move my gear stick to get in, get into there, I'm just gonna reconnect these buttons for a second. And again, just the reason for that is I just wanna make sure the power's off on this one. So you just press and hold the middle home button, there you go, power's off. So I can go back to disconnecting these. Almost forgot, two more smaller screws just down the side here as well. There we go, now the screen comes out. Two cables on the back of this one, push and hold that one, disconnect. Push down on this one, disconnect. There we go, so that's the actual display unit itself there, that's just how that one disconnects. And that sits inside there. Now this is the bit that I actually call the brain of the car effectively and that controls everything including your amplifiers that's where your um, antennas connect into as well as any other electronics that other front piece that's mostly just there for display and touch input so four screws on this one and we'll pop this one out there we go that's that one slid out now i'm just going to look behind here and then just disconnect all these cables as well so we can get the whole unit out So this is pretty much what the back of this looks like. Now 
Now this is my antenna cable and this one here is an adapter cord that I've actually had to get. So that's a standard sort of, that one runs off my GME CB style antenna which sits on the front of the ute. So I already have a larger antenna and that has actually made a significant difference to my reception as it is. But I did need to get this adapter and if you want to install a booster you will need this adapter as well. This is called a Fakra connection and it is, this one's a female Fakra to a female just standard sort of antenna plug. You can get these from Autobahn or eBay, any one of the two. Um, they are a special order items, so do allow about a week or so in order to be able to get those in. So for the actual booster itself, we just have a quick look at this one. So this one has the standard sort of antenna connection here as well. It does have an inline fuse that does come with it. Uh, that's a little two amp fuse there, so it's not much. And then you've just got your power connection cable. Now this one, I just need to some, find some sort of power source inside here. Um, that will come on with the actual ignition. We'll connect that one to that. Antenna goes to this one, and then my little adapter will go from this back to the radio. So we're just gonna put that straight into the line there. So let's find a little power source for this one and we'll get it connected up. So finding power for this little unit. Uh, what I've done is I've just run down the back there um, I've run inside to the actual cigarette lighter. So this goes onto the back of this unit here. I did end up disconnecting that. Um, connects up to the cigarette lighter, which is those two prongs down the bottom. And I just soldered that into there and then just taped it up just to make sure it's nice and secure as well. So from here on out, um, we're just gonna reconnect this bottom one. There we go, just push that back on there and just make sure it's nice and secure. So as I mentioned before, these are the other two ends. Now this is the inline sort of section that you have got, and this is the other little booster. So this one here runs from my antenna from the front of the ute there. Uh, so that's gonna go onto that one. And then with this unit here, this is gonna go into my actual adapter, which is the Fakra adapter. Okay, so if you don't have an additional antenna installed in your ute as well, what you will actually have is you will have this is your antenna cable, which runs from the top of the windshield there. So this one is a female Fakra. So what you will need is you will need a male Fakra adapter into a male standard antenna adapter. And from there, you will need a female antenna adapter back into a female Fakra adapter. So you will need an adapter on both ends of this one where I only need the one as I already have a standard plug on the other side. Now, how I can tell this thing is working is if I do have an FM signal, if I turn the ignition on on the car, I've got power and there's a little red light. So once the ignition goes back off again, um, give it a couple of minutes and the system will cool down and this little red light will turn back off again. So that's it, that's pretty much that installed. Fuses in, lights are on, everything else has got a connection. We're gonna tuck it right into the back of it here and we're gonna start putting a few things back together. So we'll jump into that bit. Okay, there we go. So we're just gonna slide that one in there. Make sure this cable stays out, that one connects up to your hazard lights so just on the top of your dash there. With this one I have found before that it is sometimes easier to connect the top section in first and then come through, push this bottom corner in, that'll line these ones up, making sure you don't bend them. Just along the bottom there. Uh, 
There we go. Turn that back on again. Um, I want to hear from people where your family and that's it. Still All installed, ready to go. At the end of the year, giving everyone a family mm -hmm. update. Okay guys, hopefully that helped you out a little bit. It's a bit disjointed the video, but um, it might help a couple of people just with removing the dash if they want to install anything behind that, any amplifiers or anything. Yeah, that's very much how what you need to do to be able to install the booster. They do make quite a bit of good difference. A lot of people give them quite good reviews and I'll put a link in the description as well, but yeah, you can generally get them for about $10 or so off eBay. So generally not much more than 20 if, if, if you're looking for a more expensive one. But yeah, hope that guy helped out, helped you guys out a little bit and look forward to seeing you on the next one.